Hello everyone. In this tutorial, what I want to talk about is how to import EPS files into Lightwave and then extrude them into a 3D object. Uh, I want to demonstrate first on uh, a cooler type of font and then I have some basic Arial font EPS files and we're going to go ahead and just uh, model a simple object but go over some of the, the basic tools for new novice users. So what does EPS stand for? Well, it stands for Encapsulated Postscript, and it's nothing more than a format extension for an image file, and uh, it's, it's mainly used with Adobe Illustrator. So to make an EPS file, what you want to do is go into Illustrator, and then type in you know whatever you want, or if you have a logo that's uh, all black, and save it out as an EPS, but make sure that you save it out as an Illustrator 8 EPS. Okay, so then in Modeler, after it's saved out of Illustrator, you're going to go to File, Import, EPS. And over here it says EPSF file. We're just going to click on the arrow. And we're going to navigate to wherever you saved it. That's right here. I'm going to choose that. And first let me bring up what it is. So it's this B104 logo. It's a local radio station in Pennsylvania. But to model the B, you know, you, you could just go in and, you know, keep extending polygons and just model it very easily. Or you could just simply go into Illustrator, save it as an EPS, and then bring it into Lightwave that way, which is what I did. So import that in, and you have standard, fine, or super fine. And I'll go over what those are in a second. And we're going to turn on, actually, we don't have to turn on auto access drill. That'll be more for, say, the letter A. But we can hit OK. Let me go to the top view. And then you see we have our B. Now, in the second layer, I'm going to do the same thing. Import, EPS. Except I'm going to choose Fine. And if I switch between the two, you can just see that Fine adds more points to it. So it gives a smoother result. Same thing if I go into the third layer and choose Super Fine it's even more drastic. So then once you have your single-sided polygon, you can hit Shift-E for extrude, and make sure you extrude away from the object. And that'll give you your 3D object. So very quickly, we got the result without even really modeling it. You know, Illustrator basically did all the work for us, and. Uh, because of Lightwave's EPS importer, we were able to get that logo done very quickly. So I'm going to delete that, and then let's demonstrate uh, some of the some modeling tools that are going to come in handy. But we'll also use uh, EPS files. So I was thinking of just making you know like the letter blocks, the ABC blocks that I uh, used to play with as kids. So you go to File, Import, EPS, and I'm going to choose the letter A. And this time, we have to turn on Auto Access Drill, so it can drill through that hole that's in the A. And I'm going to leave it on, let's say super, or uh, fine. Hit OK. And there we have it. And again, I'm going to hit Shift E for extrude. And let me show you what happens if you don't extrude away from the A. If you extrude in front of it, you can see that it looks like it's flipped. It's inside out. So if that, if that happens, don't worry. Just extend it away from it. Or if you ever come across this problem in any other model, and you drop the tool, and you're like, oh, wh why does it look like that? If you hit the F key, it'll flip it, and it'll fix that problem. OK, so now what I want to do is switch to polygons mode. And let's just select the front of the A and also the back of the A. And I'm going to zoom in here. And let's just bevel these edges a little bit. So hit the B key to bring out the bevel tool. And with left clicking, I'm just going to add a slight bevel to that. Drop the tool, A to fit selected. All right. So now let's make a box, Shift X. And if you want to constrain to an axis on a certain tool, you can hold the Control key down while clicking and dragging, and that'll constrain to an axis. So now we have a perfect square. All right, so enter to drop the tool. And then F2 
will center your object directly on the origin. So now what I'm going to do is use the knife tool to add some segments to this. The knife tool is under multiply, knife, or shift K as the hotkey. So holding the control key down, I'm going to left click and drag and slice through my object right about there. But I'm going to left click so I can move this slice around. Let's position it right about there. And then I'm going to right click to get that same uh, length and then just move it down here making sure it's about the same distance. Drop the tool, Shift-K again, Control, and then cut this side. Right-click, right move it over here. Okay, Shift-K again, and come to the right viewport. And slice it right there. And then again right there. So now in polygons mode, I want to go through and shift select these polygons here one more and now I want to zoom in a little bit and how I'm zooming in exactly where I want to go is by hitting the G key so if I'm selected if I'm all the way out here and I place my cursor on this corner of the box and hit the G key it will center to that area so once I'm centered to an area that I want to go to I then hit the period or comma key to zoom in or out of that area so it's a really nifty tip then we're going to go to the bevel tool, which is the B key. And I'm going to do a slight inset and then right click to create a new bevel. Bevel it in. And then right click again and add another little inset. Okay. Then so hit the A key to fit selected. You can see we have like the, the children's blocks that you would play with as kids. So let's swap layers. We have the A in the background and the box in the foreground, if you hit the apostrophe key, you can swap between those layers. Now I'm going to hit Shift H for scale. I'm going to scale down the A a little bit. All right. Hit F2 to center that. T for move. And I'm just going to move that right about there. OK, so now we want this A to be on every side of this box. And what we could do is just continually uh, copy and paste the A and move it into place or we could use radial array which will do all that for us. So with the box in the background layer and the A in the foreground layer, I'm going to go to multiply, duplicate, more, more, and it is, oops, it's in here somewhere. There we go, radial array. Okay, so we want to do four A's around the Y axis. Let's hit OK. You're going to see it'll place them all around the origin. Just make sure your object is centered. And now what I want to do is place them on the top and bottom. So for this, what we could do, you could use radial array again, or we could just select one of them, switch our modes to action center origin, control C, control V to copy the A and paste it, Y for rotate, and holding the control key down, Rotate it to the top, and then copy, paste, control V, or control C, control V, and Y for rotate, and rotate that down like so. So there we have all our A's placed nicely on our box. And now what we can do is on this layer, when nothing is selected, everything is selected. So I'm going to assign a surface to all the A's at the same time. I'm going to hit the Q key. So now in Modeler, it's important to remember that when nothing is selected, everything is selected. So to add a surface to all these, you don't even have to select them. You could simply hit the Q key and change the surface to A. Hit OK. And now in the surface editor, so you have A, we can just change it to whatever we want. I'm just going to make them white for now. And then let's go to the box. And what I want to do is just select all the inner areas that we beveled. Okay. And then hit the Q key for those because we only want to surface the polygons that are selected. So we can just call those 
inner and give it a brownish color. Okay, and now we could go through and select all these individually, but it would be a waste of time. There's an easier way to do that. What you could do is bring up the Polygon Statistics panel, which is the W key, and right here you have Surf, which stands for Surface. If you right-click that, you can choose Default. So Default is the surface that um, is gray and has we didn't apply an actual surface name to that. If you hit the plus key, it will select all the default polygons. Let's hit the Q key, we'll just name these border. And we could give that a color of, I don't know, green, I guess. <laughs> okay, and then we could go to our A layer, our A layer. We could cut those out of there by doing control X and control V, paste them in. So we got to cover some uh, basic modeling tools, and we went over how to import EPS files into Modeler. You could also do it with um, more complex logos, um, you know, anything. And if you watch the compositing tutorial on the candy box, you could actually go through and uh, learn how to lay out UVs on, say, this this toy block here. So you could make this a wooded surface and texture the A's nicely, and uh, you know, make a really nice render. Uh, uh, simple but cool render. So uh, I hope you learned a lot from this and again have fun with it.